When you're being chased by a wild boar, run in a zigzag manner, jump over a drain, or climb a tree. That's the advice given by Ben Lee, founder of Nature Tracker, a non-profit organization in response to the recent wild boar attacks in Singapore. In June, a five-year-old boy and a security guard were hurt after being knocked down by a wild boar in Bishan. More recently, an elderly woman fell and broke her hip after a wild boar charged at her in Pulau Ubin for a bag of food she was carrying. Most animals are provoked because uh, they are uh, either been afraid of being uh, attacked or being killed or being uh, harmed by somebody or someone. For example, if it's a female wild boar guarding their piglets, you know, the young, uh, probably this female will be quite prone to danger that may, they may attack. To control the wild boar population, the National Parks Board has decided to cull the animals around Lower Pierce Reservoir, where they were largely sighted. A move that sparked a debate among Singaporeans and animal rights activists. Commenting on his blog, National Development Minister Corbun Wan said that the wild boar population needs to be managed and rehoming them is not an option. We've heard reports of wild animals such as the wild monkey or the wild boar all over mainland Singapore. However, how do they live in their natural habitat? We talked to Ben Lee from the non-profit organisation Nature Tracker who brings us all around Pulau Ubin to find out more. Well, the wild boar here is actually quite a big population. Um, they are freely roaming around and they are protected by law. Nobody is supposed to feed them or to catch them. So they are very free. They can roam anywhere. But do be careful. They can be dangerous at times. We should not be getting too near to them. Uh, I will take the chance to look out for them and show you if later on we can find. And so we're off. According to a 2010 paper on nature in Singapore, there are more than 440 wild boars in Singapore thought to have disappeared from the mainland until 2000. Ben says that the wild boars used to swim to Pulau Ubin from Malaysia until fences were put up around the island to prevent further migration. Not long after setting off, we spotted some baby boars. Okay, so what are they doing with their snouts over there? Okay, uh, this, this action is a result of this uh, wild boar looking for food and using the snout they push up the sand, the earth, and in the event of doing that, they can actually see some animal, like, for example, earthworm, may fly out no, from digging and they will grab the earthworm as part of their so-called supper meal. No. To them, finding food is survival. They have to find food to eat. So they will just do, if there's a soil, they will dig. Regardless of whether the soil is in city area or in the forest or jungle area, they still do. So that's why uh, we can understand why some of the area in town has been dug by them because probably they couldn't find any more areas to dig. Once those areas have been dug before, they will not do again. They will find new ground. Ben explained that the wild boars have always been in Singapore. And it's only in recent years, due to urban development and rapid breeding, that they had to leave their homes to find food outside of the forest. Okay, these are the destruction. As you can see, the earth is quite disturbed, right? Uh, these are destruction caused by wild boar. Um, actually, wild boar, when they do this digging of roots and soil, in the deep of the jungle is fine. You know, nobody goes there and go and check it out and what happened. It may not matter to people because they don't go there. But if they dig along the roadside, it's quite unsightly. And that is where the authority do not want it to happen. So could it actually be dangerous? Um, yes. Anything that is disrupted like this case, it can cause some skidding. Okay, it may also uh, affect the wheel of the vehicle from skidded. Uh, because of the road being disturbed, the soil is not strong, it doesn't hold firm on the wheel. The wild boar problem could, however, be attributed to people who feed the animals. So why can't we feed the wild animals? Okay, uh, the reason being, when you feed wild animals, they become so-called lazy, they may never find food, they think there's always food supply to them, and they will always go back to the same spot to look for food. The danger also comes about is uh, when you bring food along and you don't feed them, when you stop suddenly, or anybody who will innocently walk past with the food, they may attack you, you know, if you're not feeding. The best way to avoid being attacked is to carry dark coloured plastic bags, such as black or grey, instead of more outstanding colours like red. But if that doesn't deter them? If you see a wobble that is about to attack you, you have to be faster than him, like. your reaction has to be run away first. 
of course, if there's anything that high, you can climb up like staircase or trees or anything, you can climb. Uh, would be better solution. And also, if there's a drain, much much better. You can jump over the drain and you cannot cross because Wabo is heavy. They're also quite afraid of drain. No? They go down the drain and they get stuck inside. In the event that there are no drains or trees in the vicinity, run zigzag.